So the mountain chicken is a huge critically endangered frog that only occurs in Montserrat and Dominica and it's um, critically endangered because it's heavily impacted by the chytrid fungus which is um, a disease which is causing population declines in amphibians all over the world. Um, the mountain chicken is particularly susceptible to the disease so it was decided that they needed a, an exit to rescue population. The government wasn't able to alert us that the disease has hit and the guys at Durrell and here at ZSL were able to collect a population from which the breed, the cap, this captive population we now have, a safety net population from which we've bred this, these biosecure individuals that we can release back into the wild. So in 2012 we had our first breeding of mountain chickens here which was a great achievement um, for the team here at ZSL and um, we reared two clutches and these were reared in biosecure facilities in preparation for them being released in Montserrat. When the frogs were exported from ZSL and Dole, they were flown out to the Caribbean. When they arrived in Montserrat, they were unloaded from the plane and they were taken in trucks from the airport to the National Botanical Gard Gardens in Montserrat. There they were um, checked to see that all the frogs were uh, in peak health. and they were given a rehydration bath and housed in temporary holding pools um, that they had established at the gardens. So today we're in Sweetwater Gut. It's in the centre hills of Montserrat, which is in the West Indies. And this is the release site that we've used to release mountain chicken frogs back into the wild here. We started at the holding ponds where the frogs were placed after they were transferred to Montserrat and we capture the frogs and read the microchip so we know which frog we're dealing with. And the frogs get swabbed to determine what the chytrid infection status is. And we've also taken the temperature of the skin, which is one of the variables, that one of the measurements that we take as part of our data collection. And then the frogs get rebagged in the same bags that they were brought in and repacked into the boxes and then driven them here to the release site. And the field team are now currently taking those frogs and placing them into these tents. So we've modified camping tents to act as a soft release process. So rather than just bringing the frogs here and releasing them into the forest, which might be a bit of a shock for the frogs and a bit stressful, we release the frogs into these camping tents, which have a few leaves and a bit of water just for them to rehydrate before the release. And that we, let, we leave them there for a half an hour or so just to calm down, get used to the noises of the forest, readjust to the temperature. And then when we're ready and the frogs are calm, we simply remove the openings of the tents and allow the frogs to hop out of their own accord. Some of the frogs have these radio transmitters implanted into them, which happens at the um, at Doral Wildlife before they are um, brought out here to Montserrat. Each radio transmitter has a unique frequency to the frog, so it means that we can follow individuals um, and actually track their location. So since we released the frogs, they mostly have stayed around the tent. We have had one that seems to have gone for a bit of an explore, so luckily it's not gone too far. We can still pick the signal up from the path, but we did find one way up on this eastern bank, so he's already gone um, exploring the forest. But generally they'll stay around the tents for the first few weeks just while they find themselves and they may go searching for water. Um, we can hear one now actually just calling off in the distance. Um, but the, point, the purpose of these transmitters is they allow us to locate the frogs um, once they've been released. And this will allow us to track these individuals really intensively over the next three months. But the most important part is it will allow us each week to catch the frogs and health check them. So we will look for clinical signs of chytrid. We will measure and weigh the frogs to ensure that they are growing naturally and, and that they are healthy. But we will also swab the, the frog skin. And these swabs will be able to tell us not only whether the frogs have chytrid fungus on the skin, whether it tests positive or negative for the chytrid fungus, but also how much chytrid fungus is on the skin and allow us to monitor the survival rates of these frogs as they progress through the forest over the next several months. So the Caribbean has these two defined seasons, one drier and slightly cooler, one wet and very hot. And these two contrasting uh, environments are very, are very different for the, for the fungus. They have very different effects on the fungus. The fungus likes a certain temperature, it's waterborne, so it needs to be wet, so maybe the wet season is important. And this release is the only one we've done in the wet season. So what we, we really want to see is whether the 
the frogs, we think, might distribute further or disperse further once they've been released, which might reduce the pressure of the disease. It might reduce the density of frogs and therefore the likelihood that they come into contact and spread the disease will be reduced. This contrasts the previous releases where in the dry season we believe these frogs accumulate around water sources because they require a source of water, they are a frog, and so they might act as kind of reservoirs for the disease. Other species, sympatric species, so tree frogs and cane toads that you find on the island, might also aid the spread of this disease. And in the dry season, then we think they're more likely to come into contact. So this wet season really is really important. Last year, as part of the Darwin funded project, we were able to bring the mountain chicken recovery program together and develop a 20 year action plan for this species. That's something that people sometimes fail to understand is the length of time uh, that is needed to be committed to these projects um, to actually make a difference but uh, my hope is that the research and the hard work that the field team here in Montserrat has been putting into these releases but also the hard work that's going on with the Dominican field team as well will just allow us to advance that knowledge that little bit further to not only develop conservation strategies that will allow us to eventually restore this species back into the wild here on both islands but also that will allow us to make a difference to other, all the other amphibian species around the world that are impacted by this chytrid fungus.